Marquise Taylor, founder and CEO of Coaching for Change. Where'd you get that mentality of let's pay it forward rather than and, and, and start this nonprofit? What got this whole idea started? I had the luxuries of going to a private school, uh, but I lived in the inner city. So I was able to see both sides of the spectrum of really having luxuries and also not having luxuries. Uh, talk about, um, you're, you're in a leadership position, you know, um, being, being in charge of a, your own nonprofit. Um, that's important because you're in a leadership position and you're black. And there's not a lot of leadership positions out here in this country of black males. Talk about the importance of, you know, little children seeing someone that, all right, Marquise, and, and, you know, he's in a leadership position, he's in charge of a nonprofit, and it's someone that looks like them. Talk about the importance of that. I mean, I, I think that's vital. It's something that I think is, is really masked over because one of the, one of the main things that I, I look at right now is giving young kids an opportunity and access. Um, and I think that it, at some, sometimes it's hard to give this to young kids because all they know are the professional athletes, the entertainers, and there's no middle ground, right? So either you're the best at whatever you do or you become, or you're nothing. So I think that it, it's important for us to have a representation of being leaders and having that opportunity. Let's talk about black people in leadership positions. Okay. Why do you think there's not enough Black people is it is it the education issue? I mean, what what what's what's the underlying theme? I mean, I think that I think the reason why there aren't more Black people in leadership positions, I think one is because of education. I think two is lack of access and opportunity to to jobs. So I think that a lot of our young people lack exposure to the opportunities that exist out there. So they limit themselves without giving themselves the opportunity to ever grow and expand. Let's talk about coaching for change. So you're at Stonehill, you're on a, you're on a basketball scholarship, you're, you're playing ball over there. What was the initial um, legs for, for coaching for change? And explain how has it grown over the last two years, right? Two years, yeah. So um, the, the original idea, so before I, when I left Stonehill, I worked four years in real estate finance. And I really felt there was a void there in what I wanted to do. Um, and I had an opportunity to, to travel to the Mississippi Delta. And it was there where I saw cotton fields. I saw uh, real poverty. Um, and for the first time in my life, I was, I, I was in awe of of what I was seeing, it's yeah. such a... It was right there in your face, it was yeah. reality. Right, right. Reality check, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit of reality, a little bit of these history books might be right, right? So it's like you always read and see different things about black history and the struggles that um, black people have gone through, especially here in America, but when it's right in your face, it, it becomes real. Um, so, that's where I took a step back and I reflected a lot about my own past and how sports has really impacted my life. Um, and at the same time, I know sports is powerful, right? It's a $5 billion industry. It's a microcosm of life. Yeah, yeah. And the only way that young minorities think that they can make it out is by playing sports where I believe that we can use sports to teach life skills, but never pick up a basketball. You know, we're, we're getting older. <laughs> Let's talk about 20 years from now. Yeah. 20 years from now, I mean, where I wanna be 20 years from now, you know, I wanna do documentaries and travel around the country and um, get paid for it. <laughs> so and that's, that's the big, that's the key. Yeah. Um, 20 years from now, where, where do you wanna be, man? What do you, I mean, what do, what do you see culture for change? Where do you see yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that- Where do you see black people? black people. Um, I think that right now we're in a very unique spot, right? Baby boomers are leaving uh, the job, the workforce, and I see this is our opportunity to really rise uh, by improving our educational outcomes here in inner cities. I think that black people, African Americans, minorities, uh, Latinos um, can really make a push to create a more socially just world. 
Uh, How about yourself? I th for myself, uh, my goal is that Coaching for Change is a national organization, and I'm Secretary of Education for the United States. There you go. Well, you made your trip to Washington, so <laughs> that, that's one step closer. Yeah. Um, let's talk about legacy. I was talking with my boys, and then um, we are talking about, you know, once we get rich and everything, and, you know, what's next? You know, right. I, I guess a lot of times in America, in the capitalist society, you go, you work so hard to get a certain amount of money, and that's right. like the goal, it seems like, in this country. Yeah. You know, uh, once you reach that level, there's not much money can you make. Now you're talking about legacy. Right. What do you want your legacy when you reach that level? Let's say, you know, you're working in the White House, Secretary of Education, Culture for Change is, yeah. is just dominating. What do you want your legacy to be? You ever thought about that? A little bit. Um, the legacy is to redefine how we educate our kids. Because moving into the 21st century, we need to find new ways of engaging kids, especially those who don't have a lot of resources. So if I can redefine that definition or what that looks like, um, whether it's through sports or the arts or um, through whatever it is, whatever lens people look at education through, if I could redefine what that looks like, I think that would be a pretty, pretty cool legacy.